this unit um, I'll be dealing with some teaching of organic chemistry um, and specifically the alkanes. The alkanes of course are the hydrocarbons. Um, there's the series up there. Um, I would have examples of alkanes to show them. For example, um, methane, ethane, propane, butane. Well, propane and butane is the um, gas burners that they use for cooking, or our Bunsen burner, or the little cigarette lighter. There's the butane in the lighter there. It's under pressure. It's normally a gas, so the moment we open it up, the gas will escape. Um, then as the carbon chain gets longer, we get octane, hexane, heptane, oxane, octane, nonane. Those are all liquids. If I open that up, the gas doesn't necessarily come off. It's a liquid, it's petrol, you put it in your car and you drive with it. And then as the molecule gets longer and longer and longer, they start intertwining, you get your waxes. What is the shape of these molecules? Well, if I'm teaching that, I would build some models for them so they can see it in 3D form. Um, that gives it to them in two-dimensional form, which is flat. Here, they're quite um, aware that it's actually got a shape, a very definite shape. Um, tetrahedral, carbon's got four bonds and so on. But not everybody's got access to these lovely models. That's not a problem because all you need to do is use clay, modeling clay and toothpicks. Here I've got the octane molecule. Uh, then with respect to the chemistry of the alkanes, what kind of chemical reactions do they undergo, what do they form and so on. Generally alkanes are pretty stable compounds. The bonds between the carbon and the carbon and the carbon and the hydrogen are strong covalent bonds. But where alkanes are very, very important is in the, um, as a source of energy because in these bonds there's a tremendous amount of energy that's stored. And all we've got to do is get um, to break those bonds so that we can get hold of that energy. So largely the alkanes are used as fuel. Um, uh, Bunsen burners or gas, the smaller molecules, all it requires <clears throat> is a little bit of activation energy, some oxygen in the air, and the reaction takes place, combustion starts happening, and now the alkane is converting from the hydrocarbon into carbon dioxide, water vapor, and energy. Um, clearly, that's the case with a candle as well. The nature of the combustion is also very important because you can arrange things so that you get really efficient, complete combustion, or there's incomplete combustion, in which case you're not going to get all the energy out of it that you want. If we have a look at the reaction for I'm taking the simplest hydrocarbon, methane, um, methane combining with oxygen will give you carbon dioxide, you can get carbon monoxide, plus carbon, water vapor, and some energy. But if you've got a much more efficient system and you'll get more complete combustion, the carbon monoxide and the carbon will also burn in oxygen, and so all you'll get will be carbon dioxide, water vapor, and a heck of a lot more energy. Uh, from these two equations, you can see that in the complete combustion, there's just a greater amount of oxygen that's been consumed. That's in a proportion of one to two, whereas that's um, one to three quarters. So knowing that we can get complete or incomplete combustion, depending on how much oxygen is being used in the reaction, they've designed the Bunsen burner accordingly. So there's a little air hole at the bottom here where the air comes in, drawn up as the gas comes up, draws oxygen with it, uh, the oxygen in the air. And so you'll get a very efficient mix of oxygen and gas in the chimney. By the time it gets to the top where you ignite it, you'll get a really nice, efficient mix. And so the flame is clean. It's a lovely blue color. 
um, and it's very hot. If I block that hole off, the flame changes completely. Why? Because your gas is coming up, your propane, your butane, and there's only a mix with the oxygen at the top. It's not, very, it's not a very good mix, it's not efficient, and the net result is I've got a very yellowish colored flame, um, and not very hot. And in fact, if you just take a bit of card over that, you can see that a lot of that is carbon. I would then give the children, perhaps working in groups or in pairs, small candle, um, get them to light it and set them to explore and explain what they're observing with that candle. Because questions I would pose to them is, what's burning? Is it the wick that's burning? Is the candle that's burning? What, what part of the candle is burning? How does a candle actually work? Why does it last so long? So get students to look at that, discuss it, and see what answers they come up with afterwards. So here we have a candle burning, and quite clearly it's a, it's a yellow flame. And that's immediately telling me it's incomplete combustion. And then as they look at it, um, they should be able to come up with finally that the match that you come to light the candle with initially melts the solid um, wax into liquid wax. That liquid wax is drawn up through capillary action by the wick and as it gets to the top it actually vaporizes and that's where it then combines with the oxygen and burns. Well that's enough of the uh, alkanes um, for the moment but we now get to that very important part of your lesson. How do we help students to relate this to everyday life? Well clearly we've been dealing with quite a lot of it already. They can see, um, they can relate to gas stoves in their houses, candles, etc. Um, are there other things that you can bring into the discussion? And there's a very nice one you can bring about, and it's around the motor car using fuel um, to uh, drive itself and the tuning of the engine of the motor car. Um, because all that involves is putting in the right ratio of fuel to oxygen from the air and either you're going to get nice complete combustion or incomplete combustion. And they can quite easily go and have a look at the exhaust pipe of the car to see what colors the exhaust pipe. If it's black, that's clearly incomplete combustion that's happening there. So I've shared with you my thoughts today and I invite you to send in any ideas you have and I will find ways of sharing it with others. Send it in to this email address.